If you want a great life, there can be no days off. No days off. The desire to improve. No days off. Wanting better for your life and those you care about. You're going to have days where you go backwards instead of forwards. You're going to have days where you make mistakes, where you screw up, where you fail. Yes, there will be bad days. There's going to be days where it seems like everything and everyone is against you. But on no day will you give up. There will be no day that you will give in. There will be no day where you can see defeat. You're a warrior. And warriors never give in until the battle is won. Warriors are focused. Warriors are all in. There's nothing but victory. A warrior doesn't rest until the battle is won. Is your battle won? Listen to me. If you have battles in your life that need to be won, I'm telling you, you need to get that warrior helmet on and go win the battle. You need to suck it up and step up to the top. There's no days off until you win your battle. If you want a great life, there can be no days off. I don't know what your battle is. Maybe you're fighting cancer. Maybe you're broke. Maybe your relationship is breaking down. Dig deep and find that warrior within. It's warrior time. And we will not rest until victory is on. There's no days off. Maximum commitment to your goal. 100% focus. You see nothing but your goal. You hear nothing. You taste nothing. You breathe nothing but your goal. And you do not rest until it is yours. To become your best self, there can be no days off. No days off learning. No days off searching. No days off gratitude. No days off self-care. No days off creating. No days off growing. No days off asking how. How can I be better? No days on, no days on, no days on. Are you with me? Your mind has to seek discomfort. It has to seek these difficult tasks. You have to enjoy it. And you have to figure out a way to make your mind enjoy those things. And some people it comes easy and some people it doesn't. Some people, some people it takes a long time. I always tell people the best thing you could ever do is force yourself to a schedule. Just write it down. Like today I have to do an hour on the treadmill. I have to do an hour. No matter what. Even if you're walking on it. You're doing an hour on a treadmill. The next time you're going to do it, just make, okay, you did an hour and this is the amount of miles you got in. Next time you're going to, you know, add three miles. Put, put an extra three miles in that one hour and just keep doing things like that. Write down, today I'm gonna do 100 push-ups, and I'm gonna do 100 sit-ups, and I'm gonna do 100 chin-ups. That's today. And then force yourself. Force yourself to adhere to a schedule. Make a Monday, Wednesday, Friday workout schedule. Give yourself some time off, you know? Like don't, don't even crush yourself to the point where you can't do it. Make it so that you really appreciate those Tuesdays and Thursdays. But on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you're gonna get after it, and this is what you're gonna do. Most people just try to go work out and you're kind of aimless and you show up and you're like, you pick up the jump rope and you jump a little rope, maybe you hit the heavy bag a little bit, maybe you do some curls, but you don't really have an aim. That's why people like to hire trainers because a trainer will tell you what to do. Well, you can tell yourself what to do. If you don't have money for a trainer, you don't even have to have fucking equipment. You know, with body weight squats, sit-ups, chin-ups, push-ups, you could give yourself a brutal, full body weight workout and you can find these for free on YouTube there's a ton of them there's a ton of these body weight workouts you can do just force yourself write it down Monday Wednesday and Friday I'm gonna do 100 push-ups I'm gonna do 100 chin-ups I'm gonna do 100 sit-ups even if it takes me all in day even if I have to do 10 and 10 and 10 and keep going all day just that's what you do, do 10 push-ups take a break for 20 minutes do another 10 but get those hundred in I don't believe in half-assing things. I don't, I'm not, this life is short, you know? If you get into something, get into it. And if you're not into it, don't be into it. And I think that insanity and, and greatness are next-door neighbors, and they borrow each other's sugar. 
That's that's <laughs> my <laughs> that's what I've always said. There's there's something about mastery, like true mastery, uh, that requires you to shut off massive areas of your life. There's a lot of people that are scared of their ability to do something that's difficult. I don't know if I could force myself to, to be disciplined. I don't know if I could force myself to take that kind of action. Well, if you do force yourself to take that kind of action, you don't have that question anymore. That question, I don't know if I can do it. Well, you're doing it. So you obviously can do it. Can you do it tomorrow? Well, you did it today. Or can you do it tomorrow? Just do it. You get so much more benefit out of a, dis a struggle that you choose to embark in versus a struggle that life throws upon you. Get out there and go and do something. Just, do just go. And then in the middle of doing it, it'll become easy. Even if it's not easy, even if it's hard, it's easier than not doing it and wishing that you had done it. I can get through this. I will get through this. I must get through this. The days you're not plugged in are the days you don't get 120. I have too much to accomplish to be satisfied with where I am right now. I have too much on the line. I have too many people depending on me to win. I must stay hungry. You want to kill an alligator? You kill it right after it eats. Because right after it eats, it gets satisfied. And it goes to a state like it's almost paralyzed. Some of y'all in this room, when you paralyzed, you had a little success, you've done what nobody else in your family has done and now you chilling. Come on, you ain't hungry no more? Next hunting, I need you to stay focused. Why? You should still be hungry. What have you eaten that's got you satisfied? What have you done? What have you accomplished that got you so full? I'm a contender, but the next hundred gonna change my life. You're gonna change this world. We're ordinary people doing extraordinary things. If that's you and you feeling me, just say I can. Yeah. Come on, come on, I can. I can. I can. Come on, one more time. I can. Yep, I will. I will. Yep, I must. I must. All right, all right. You will study any animal in the animal kingdom, and I will tell you this: that the lion is king because the lion is hungry. The elephant is bigger than the lion. But the sheet is faster than the lion. But nobody is more hungry than the lion. Go ask any athlete, actor, musician, philanthropist, it doesn't matter. You ask anybody who is a champion, and the difference between them and their opponent is they were more hungry for it. If there's anything I can pour from my heart in this moment, my greatest piece of advice is to protect your Hunger! Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who are you doing this for? So the days you don't feel like getting up, just think about them. Somebody tell me in this room, when you think about your siblings, when you think about mom and dad and grandma, when you think about your uncle and aunts, when you think about those coaches, those people who've been there for you, just raise your hand if you say, E.T., sleep is better than that. Just raise your hand and tell me, anybody in the room, sleep is better than them, E. Just raise your hand, somebody tell me, E.T. You don't, you don't get it. You don't know how hard it is. E, I probably don't. I just lived in abandoned buildings. Hey, I trash cans. I probably don't. Maybe I ain't never been through what you've been through, but I've been through my go-through. And you don't, you, don't, you don't get here by quitting when you're tired. You get here by quitting when you finish, when you're done. You don't stop when you're tired. You stop when you're done. You stop when you complete it, when you execute it. Execution is worship. And so I execute for my mom. I execute for my grandma. I execute for my sister. I execute for those kids in the hood who looking for a role model. That's why I wear the hat with a PhD. That's why I wear the J's. So when the kids in the hood look at me, they say, if ET can do it, I can do it. That's why I can't quit and give up, even though I get tired just like everybody else. Why? Because this is what I do. This is my lane. This is your lane. You got to murder it. So when I ask you, you got energy, don't play with me. When I tell, when I say again, you got that energy for the next hundred days, I need to feel your soul in this room. All right, I can? Come on, I can? Come on, I can? I will. I must. Come on, I can? I will. I must. Give yourself some energy. Come on. I don't care if you gotta listen to me a thousand times, I need you to get crystal clear about your future. Because the only reason why you are here, the only reason why you're alive, 
is because you have work to do. And you gotta figure out why on earth are you here? What is your destiny? What is the dream that God has given you? You gotta have like a shark mentality because if a shark swims backward, it dies. A shark can only move forward. And so I need you every single day you wake up to smell blood and go after that dream. When you are hungry, you are creative. When you are hungry, you are innovative. When you are hungry, when you are no longer full, when you are no longer satisfied with where you are and you raise your standards, it is only then that you can have your future. If you can stay hungry, you can get the resources. If you can stay hungry, you can get the strategy. If you can stay hungry, the ideas gonna come. If you can stay hungry, the connections will be aligned. If you can stay hungry. The problem with many of you is that you got full. You got complacent. You got lazy. Somewhere along the line, you lost your enthusiasm, your optimism. You lost your hunger. I'm never full. I'm never full. I'm never full. I'm never full. You gotta get hungry, 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 hungry! Eliminate all distractions. Eliminate all distractions. So you gotta have a goal. You gotta have a dream. You gotta get hungry. And then you gotta get real disciplined. Because motivation will get you going. A speech will get you fired up. But discipline is going to give you the power to stay committed to whatever that goal is. I'm going to tell you this right now. Some praise can be poison. It keeps you locked in a state of paralysis. And you shine in trophies from the past. And that's why you always hear those people from the past like, Yeah, remember back in the day when I used to do this. Remember back in the day. They're still shining the trophy of the past accomplishments. So sometimes we can, we can receive praise like a venomous snake that injects its poisonous venom in our veins and in our heart and we get full. We get real full. You gotta be hungry for your dream. You gotta be hungry for your next level. You gotta be hungry for connection and alignment. You have to be hungry to fulfill your destiny. Hunger is not an idea. Hunger is not a mood. Hunger is a lifestyle. I'm never full. This is me every day, all day. I'm hungry to learn. You gotta be hungry to read. You have to be hungry to grow. You have to be hungry to manifest what is in your head. Just say, I can. Come on, come on, I can. I can. Come on, one time. I yep, I will. I will. Yep, I must. I must. All right. Don't abort your mission out of frustration. When you are in the midst of a challenging situation, your mind will tell you that you are finished. Your mind will tell you that you may as well cut your losses now. Your mind will tell you that you are stuck and will probably be where you are right now for a long time. But your thoughts cannot be trusted when your emotions are high. Your thoughts cannot be trusted when you have just experienced rejection. Being rejected does not mean that you are not smart enough or talented enough. Rejection is a part of your journey to success. As Buckminster Fuller said, there's nothing in a caterpillar that tells you that it's going to be a butterfly. And welcome to the human condition. That's the truth of what it's like to be a person. You're hoping that you turn inward and see some sign, some glimmer, some gift that you have that's been bestowed upon you, that you were born with, that is your very birthright. But there's nothing. You were born hopelessly average. And the sooner that you accept that, the sooner that you accept that you are no better than anyone that came before you and everyone that's going to come after you. But all of us have potential. And so the question becomes, the question you have to answer with your very life, the question that your actions will answer, what are you gonna do with that potential? 
Will you actuate it? Will you bust your ass to get good? Will you get so good over time that you can play with the greats? Will you get so good that people look at you with awe? Can you get so good that you become the excuse that other people use not to try? Can you get so good that people have to dismiss you as naturally talented? Can you get so good that people refuse to believe that they can get that good? Can you work so hard gaining a set of skills and driving yourself day after day to get better, never accepting who you are, always pushing yourself forward, always demanding more, and seeing the beauty in what you can become and knowing that even today, as a caterpillar with nothing, with nothing to indicate that you'll become a butterfly, can you become the butterfly through sheer force of will? Because if you can become that, you become a beacon of hope, not for other people, for yourself, because you prove that there really are no limits. And as Walt Disney said, you may not realize it when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. Why? because it's the thing that's going to make you react. It's the thing that's going to hold you down. It's the thing that is going to make you say, never again, no more. I refuse to accept this about myself. I refuse to accept that I'm average. I refuse to accept that I can't be something more. I refuse to stop when something kicks me in the teeth. I refuse to stop when people hate on me or tell me that I can't do something. I refuse to be dictated to by anyone, even my own potential. I refuse to be held back by anything, least of all me. And when you get that in your head, when you know that you can transcend even yourself, that negative voice in your head, that even getting kicked, even failing, getting knocked down, and being covered in blood, mud, dirt, everything that would try to stop you, that you'll rise up and that you'll keep pushing and that you'll define what you're going to become. When you have that in your mind, then you become unstoppable. Then you are the caterpillar that becomes the butterfly, but you have to be willing to take the knocks. You have to be willing to make the sacrifices. You have to be willing to suffer. And when you're willing to suffer, you can become anything because it's in that process of breaking and mending and growing and shaping that you realize that you are both the sculptor and the marble. And therein lies the pain of creation, but in that you can create yourself to be anything you want. So the question isn't, can you do it? It's only, are you willing to do it? The reason people change is because of pain. The reason we grow is because we get uncomfortable and we embrace being uncomfortable. But being honest with the pain that we feel is usually the prime mover for people to do the work that is necessary to push to the edge. Embrace the pain that you're gonna feel when you're trying to do something great. You have to understand, you have to know that with greatness comes pain. Stop listening to the opinions of others around us that are saying, oh, you're never gonna make it. It's impossible. You can't do it. You will never make it. Acknowledging our suffering being in touch with the pain, that's enough to say, I can't do this, I don't want to do this anymore. Like this is not the person I want to become. Like I used to sit there and look at my class and my teachers and I'm like, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show all of you. You think I suck? I'm gonna be the biggest, best person on earth. You need to immerse yourself in school. You need to go in deep. All you're doing every single day is studying. You're gonna get distracted from your goals. And all these things, are, arrows are gonna come at you all the time. Whatever your goal is, you have to get there. Even though people are gonna say you can't do it, even though people are gonna throw different opportunities, you know, you know, I'm sure your friends went out a million times to happy hour when you had to stay late. Find out what it is you want and go after it as if your life depends on it. Why? Because it does. Thoughts become things. Whatever you put out into the universe, you are going to get back. You have an opportunity to still be achieving. So get up and get on it. Because the weak will struggle. Success is reserved for those that are the strongest. 
often, oftentimes people confuse discipline with focus. And this is what, what, why that's important. There are things that some people can excel at because they're focused on them and because they're drawn to it and they have a, an incredible passion for it. Versus like you tell a guy like, hey, you know, you're gonna study to be an electrical engineer. And it's like, I don't wanna be a an electrical engineer. Well, you gotta have discipline. And so they don't have the drive and they don't, they don't get excited about it and they don't do, but if you tell that guy, whatever, you're gonna be a golfer and he loves golf and he's practicing every day and he becomes a professional golfer. And you say, well, I, I thought that guy didn't have any discipline. Well, it's not that he didn't have any discipline. He's just not interested in that other thing. I was never a disciplined kid, but I, was, I would find things that I loved and I was obsessed and I always felt embarrassed by it because people would say, oh, your son, like to my mom, your son is so disciplined. And she'd be like, my son's crazy. Like he's not disciplined. He finds these things and that's all he does all day long. Right. Like it's not really disciplined because he doesn't clean his room. Right. He's, he's fucking lazy. There's all sorts of shit he's supposed to do. I never did my homework. There's all the, but if I had a thing that I was into, I was obsessed. You're crazy about it. But I would, it would bother me that I didn't really have discipline. Like if I had jobs that I had to do, I didn't do a good job at them, like right. construction jobs that I had. But when how, it came to martial arts- How did you find those arts, things though? How did you find those things? Did you stumble upon- I just got lucky, them? just right. got lucky. Martial arts, I just got lucky. And it clicked with me like almost immediately. I, I became obsessed, you know, and I, I wanted to be, I wanted to excel at it. And so I was just doing it all day long. And I think the more you choose to embark in these struggles, these especially, physical and mental struggles. Because I, I consider both martial arts, yoga, and actually even trail running, I, I consider the mental struggles as much as physical struggles. Mm -hmm. Like, because I could stop anytime I want. I, I'm halfway up the hill, I can go mm -hmm. fuck this. So I'm walking the rest of the way. Yep. Call my dog over, put him on the leash. I'm like, we're walking, buddy. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> yeah. But, or you could say, no, this is what I'm doing today. I have a, I have a very clear, plan in front of me my, my plan is we're doing four miles today this is where we start this is where we end this is what we're doing sometimes when things are really hard to do you think oh my god I gotta stop doing this but once you do it and you complete it you have a satisfaction this sense of satisfaction that you did something really difficult that is irreplaceable and some kids never get that and they just stay fat and stupid their whole life right. and some kids they get these little lessons and then they realize like you can push yourself and you can get somewhere. You know, some kids get real lucky and they get involved in sports or martial arts early. And one of the best benefits of sports is you realize that through hard work, you get improvement. Through improvement, you get success. Through success, you get that big dopamine rush. You get that good confidence, feeling. Right? You get confidence. Yeah. You get this knowledge. You get the girl. Yeah, you get, sometimes, <laughs> I didn't. But you get this knowledge that you can do something that's difficult and you can overcome, even though it feels like you can't. You're gonna have days where you suck, mm -hmm. but those days are so motivational. I mean, that's the bright side of tragedy. So when you come through it, you, you really will have an appreciation for the moments without tragedy. You don't really feel it unless you, you get, unless life burns you, you don't really feel it. Mm -hmm. It's one of, one of the things that I tell people all the time, because a lot of people have a hard time defining themselves. They define themselves by failure because they failed. But I'm like, you're not your failures, you're you, okay? Your life is a series of lessons you've learned. Now, if you just dwell on the failures, like that's not, that's not healthy, it's not smart, and it's not empowering. What you gotta do is look at those failures and go, well, now you know what not to do. But you're not that, you're yep. you. You know, you could have done the stupidest shit ever, but it's not you, it's not you. You're, you're a different thing. You're the, the being that's experiencing all these failures. And if you know that they're fuck ups, then you've learned, okay? The, if you repeat them over and over again, well then I can't talk to you. Yeah. You know, if you keep going back and doing the same stupid shit over and over again, well, you got a deeper issue. You, you know, I don't know what it is, but I don't have the time. Building up that ability to endure things, that's also a very important mechanism that you could apply to everyday life. Like that, the mechanism of understanding how to endure. Like Jocko Willink is a perfect example. You know, he has that thing on his, if you go to his Instagram page, almost every other photo is a watch. Mm -hmm. And it's a watch that says 4.30 in the morning. Because that's when he gets up and he works out. And he earns the sunset. And he does that, he's so disciplined. And 
he's got this saying that's a great saying, discipline equals freedom. And it's true because he's able to force himself to do that every single time. There's no excuses. There's no breaks. There's no days off. It doesn't happen. So because of that, you're like, you're not scared. You know that you can keep doing it. You know that you can continue to perform. Let me share a few things with you that hopefully will help the pain to subside. You, know, you can read them if you want. You can read them again later if you feel like it. But honestly, man, if I spend all this time typing this out to you, and you don't allow it to be a tender to your fire, well, you're just letting us both down. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to do anything. But you get to choose. I'm gonna give you four rules that if you can obey, if you can make these rules a command, that I believe not only will the pain subside, but perhaps transformation could take place on the inside. Rule number one, there are no more zero days. What is a zero day? A zero day is when you don't do a single solitary thing towards whatever your dream or goal is in this life. So I want you to make a conscious decision that there will be no more zero days. Now, I'm not saying you gotta kill yourself but the point I'm trying to make is that you need to promise yourself that your new program, your new system, will be a life lived of no more zero days. This means that when the day is over and you look up and it's 11.58 at night, you did something. No more zero days. I mean, I don't care if it was one push-up, one sit-up, one page of the book, you feel me? But just make a decision that there will be no more zero days. You see, when you're in the vortex of being bummed and you are trapped in the pattern of self-sabotaging behavior, you get used to it. And the only way you are going to break out is with a massive string of consistent non-zero days. That's rule number one. Rule number two is that you are going to have to be grateful to the three U's. Call it mumbo jumbo if you want to. Newsflash, the three U's are the past you, the present you, and the future you. And if you want to love somebody and have someone to love you back, you got to learn to love yourself. And the three U's are key. You gotta be grateful for the past you, for the positive things you've done, and do favors for the future you, like you would for your best friend. You feeling bad today? Stop for a second and think of a good decision you made yesterday. That salad, that fish, that protein shake, instead of the burger or fries. Did you save money in your past to buy something that resonated with you and thank the past you? Are you currently saving toward that dream or that goal you have or that improbable feat? Then you need to be grateful for the present you. The last part of the three U's is you gotta love your future self. You gotta do your future self a favor. I know you might be tired you may be addicted to a video game or a television series. Not today, present self. This one's for future me. No PlayStation, no Xbox, no distraction. I don't care if it's one more push-up or one more sit-up or one more page in the book. You see the cycle of doing something for someone else, future you and thanking someone for the good in your life. Past you is the key to building gratitude and productivity. Don't doubt me. Over time, you should spread that gratitude to others who have helped you on your path. Rule number three, 
You are gonna have to forgive yourself. I mean it. Maybe you have all the know-how, the money, the ability, strength, and talent to do whatever you wanna do. But let's say you still don't do it. Now you're gonna give yourself a tough time for not doing what you need to do. Pick your head up. Being disappointed in yourself causes you to be less productive. If you can forgive yourself, you can be healed from the past, equipped for the present, and cast vision for the future. You owe you, forgive you, and get on with the rest of your life. Rule number four is the easiest, and it's three words, exercise and books. That's it, pretty standard advice. But when you exercise daily, you actually get smarter. You get crystal clear about the road ahead. When you exercise, you position yourself to win the war. When you exercise and you push yourself, you attest the limitations of your soul and you'll become crystal clear, both internally and externally, that all you have is all you need. As for books, almost everything we've ever thought or felt or gone to or wanted or wanted to know how to do has been figured out by someone else. So get some books. Read Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Read Emotional Intelligence. Read From Good to Great. Read Thinking Fast and Slow. Read books that will help you understand. Read books that will get you crystal clear on your future. Read the Bodyweight Fitness Reddit and incorporate it into your workouts. Reading gets you to the next level faster. One last piece of advice though. If you wake up tomorrow and you can't remember the four rules, I just laid it out for you. Read this again. Watch this video again. Don't forget, non-zero days as much as you can. The three U's, gratitude and favor, forgiveness, exercise, and books. And this is how you can dominate and get an unfair competitive advantage in the marketplace and in the game of life. And this is the road to self-improvement physically, emotionally, mentally. You got this, man. No more zero days.